so which Space Marine detachments are looking hot and which are less so. Let's talk through the strength of the new Marine formations and weigh them up against the power of the Divergent Chapters ones. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines once more, and in this video I thought it would be fun to do a tier ranking of the Space Marine Detachment strengths, talk through each one of them in turn, what they do, and perhaps what sort of units might be pushed for you to include in them, and then overall how well I think it roughly comes together in game. Now the new Codex Space Marines has come out, we've got seven different core detachments, a lot of them loosely themed around the various different chapters, though not locked to any one. And then in addition to that, we've got the Divergent chapter ones, which are all just locked to the specific units of their chapter, and you can't take other chapters' special things in them. For this video, I thought it would be fun to rank them into rough tiers of power level. I've chosen to rank them in four separate tiers overall, though obviously they will vary a bit depending on your playstyle, units available, and chapter choice. So it's not impossible some of the lower tier options could be stronger than some of the higher tier options for your collection in question. In any case though, let's jump straight into it, and start out with the stuff that I'd consider the weakest. First up for the forces of the Astartes, the detachments that I'd consider probably stand out weak amongst the rest of them are the First Company Task Force and the Dark Angels Unforgiven Task Force. Both of those are quite clearly just underpowered a bit on paper, and while they do have a few interesting options, I feel like they are going to give you some of the less chance to win games out of virtually any of the rest. Like the rest of the new detachments, the first company's task force hasn't been around for all that long, but initial reactions to it were just really quite negative, and it does look like in the first week or two of tournament play, it does seem to be very very rarely selected, and kind of doing poorly when it is. For the detachment rule, it gets you the old oath of moment for one single turn, be rolling wound rolls against the nominated extremist threat. It is a big damage buff and is kind of nice for devastating wound weapons, but it feels kind of painful when that's your only detachment rule compared with all the things that the other ones get you. Otherwise, the stratagems are very heavily locked into supporting the veterans and the terminators. Perhaps interesting ones are things like a plus one to hit, which is just generally handy enough plus teleporting terminators, and for the enhancements, the I'm Resolve Feel No Pain type buff is quite nice, and there's another one for a plus one attacks once per game. For the encouraged units, you really do need to skew very very heavily into the Space Marine Veteran units, as the stratagems don't work on anything else, then you're basically going to need a lot of Blade Guard, Vanguard, Stern Guard and Terminators, otherwise you might as well run something else. I'd say that a lot of those units are in the states where they're pretty usable and are interesting enough, but don't generally tend to be things that you really want to take an entire army of, maybe just one or two units to use some of the most interesting stratagems and enhancements that the detachment provides. Weirdly enough, Reavers can be pretty handy with Fear Made Manifest, at least that gives them an on-paper way to make their Battleshock tricks genuinely dangerous, and Stern Guard kind of specifically like the V-Roll Wound Roll turn, as they get devastating wound weapons. Overall though, I can't really see this one being a strong way to play Space Marines going forward, which is kind of a shame, the core rule just isn't impactful enough, and the stratagems are generally so-so, and very specifically locked to units. At the very least, I feel like they could probably have allowed two or three turns of the boosted oath of moment, or more powerful supporting stratagems given that they're a little bit limited in target. The other detachment that I say is perhaps struggling most out of any of them is the Unforgiven Task Force, the Dark Angels launch one that builds around the Battleshock for the most part. While it does get some fairly fun stratagems, it just feels significantly weaker than the Gladius for the Dark Angels, mainly due to the core rule being nothing more than a slight resilience to Battleshock, which might infrequently add up to you scoring a couple more victory points once every few games. From tournament stats, the Unforgiven Task Force lags in win percentage significantly behind the Gladius for Dark Angels, and far far more so than the other chapter specific detachments like the Space Wolves or the Blood Angels. It's definitely not like you can't win with this, given the Dark Angels powerful units, but I feel like you're generally going to have a better chance with Gladius or something else. The stratagems are probably the highlight though, they can have a minus one damage when they're charged, there's a one CP one for return fire which is generally quite good value, and there's some damage buffs on top of that which could be right in the right situation, and probably out of the enhancements, the Pennant of Remembrance is the pick of the bunch, giving a Terminator squad some feel no pain. Overall you're probably going to want a Terminator squad with that relic, plus a fair amount of good ranged firepower options given the stratagem boosts. But like the first company task force, I'd rate this one as definitely one of the detachments that's going to do less for your units than most. Moving on to tier 3, these are the ones that I'd consider the lower power detachments out there, the Anvil Siege Force, Sons of Sanguinius, Champions of Rus and the Stormlance Task Force, though I would caveat that Stormlance Task Force is just really variable depending on whether you're playing Space Wolves, if you're doing Thunderwolf spam with it, it is quite good. 
The Anvil Siege Force, again, was maybe one that was kind of obvious that on paper it had some interesting tricks that would probably not do super well in a competitive environment. Early impressions do seem to have it having one of the lowest win rates of the detachments and not played all that frequently. This Imperial Fist vaguely themed detachment is that all your weapons get the heavy keyword, so plus one to hit if they're static, and any weapons that were heavy already get a plus one to wound if they're static already, which is a quite a cool buff on certain weapons. They do have some interesting stratagems that also help you build a fairly static gun line. There's a nice sustained on lethal hits combo if your unit can remain stationary. A tank hunter's 1 for 2 CP for big 4 wound rerolls, and a fun 1 to 4 back at the end of the fight phase, all ready to shoot the opponent down anew. There's a couple of nice leader traits as well, including the ignores cover 1 and a feel no pain boost. Basically, if you're playing this detachment, then you're going to need at least a fairly hefty Space Marine Firebase to make the core rules worth it. Though you probably don't want to go 100% gun line, as you can't afford to have your entire army just stationary, you are going to need to move to gain lines of sight and take objectives and things. Perhaps in particular, any ignores line of sight things like whirlwinds are guaranteed to have quite good value out of this. Anything with a heavy keyword is kind of nice. Maybe things like Hell Blasters or even Intercessors or Heavy Intercessors with Bolt Rifles. And just generally long range Space Marine Firepower Vehicles might have to move a little bit less than most. Things like Ballistas, Dreadnoughts or anything else that's comfortable dealing damage at long range. Overall though I feel like the core rule is just very limited in a competitive environment where there's good terrain about. Movement is just generally essential to get lines of sight and get towards objectives. And unless your opponent just literally marches up the board for their army to get shot you're going to have problems. It definitely has the feel of a detachment that's maybe going to be a bit better in more casual games where you might be facing opponents that expose a bit too much of their army or you might just be playing with a little bit less terrain on the table depending on the environment that you're playing in. Overall I think it definitely has some strength and some fairly interesting supporting rules but overall a bit less helpful and a bit harder to bring to bear than most. Next up we've got the Blood Angels and the Sons of Sanguinius. Like the Dark Angels, one of the chapter specific detachments that seems to perform just generally a bit worse than the Gladius for Blood Angels army lists. Though in tournament stats and win percentages and things it doesn't seem to trail the Gladius by anywhere near as far as the Dark Angels one does, only being a few percentage points behind. The core rule is admittedly really quite a fun one, plus one attack and plus one strength on the charge definitely takes Space Marine melee from something that's often a little bit tame to something that's genuinely quite scary. Beyond that though, the supporting rules I feel like are just generally quite uninspiring. I do really quite like Red Rampage for lethal hits and lance, that's very powerful with units punching up against tough stuff, but otherwise I feel like they're just a little bit situational or not that strong for the command point cost, and the enhancements overall feel quite similar to that as well, just not stand out. If you're using this then you're going to be going heavily for Space Marine Melee. It makes sense that it would incentivize the Blood Angels unique melee units quite a lot. Death Company are hard hitting enough. Sanguinary Guard are still a bit over costed. Though I guess you'll get more value out of them here than elsewhere perhaps. Or the more core codex options like Blade Guard Aggressors or maybe the Jump Intercessors. Hopefully led by Dante or Sanguinary Priest when Games Workshop eventually FAQ the character attachments for them. Overall I'd say that the melee damage buff is a good one, but maybe just seems not to have the same sort of value as the advance and charge that Gladius can bring, never mind the other supporting special rules which I think Gladius does far better. Still though, I would say it's not all that far behind, and you can still have your Space Marines punching extra hard with this, which is fun admittedly. Next up we've got the Space Wars Champions of Ross, where overall I'd rank it in a similar sort of place to the Blood Angels one. From statistics and things, it just generally seems to trail the Space Wolves Gladius by a little way, though not by loads. The boosts that it gets you here just aren't quite as good as very, very easy access to advance and charge, which is kind of big for a lot of the Space Wolf units. The core rule for this one is to do the sagas, four different character quests to either kill things or survive things or various other bits. And when a character unit has managed to do that, then it unlocks it for the rest of the army for the rest of the game, potentially meaning that they can be quite snowball if you get that going early. If you manage to get the first few bits falling into place, then you could be looking at a very scary army for the next few turns. They do just generally tend to be a bit unreliable though. Most of them are somewhat dependent on your opponent exposing things to character units or even just having certain things in their army full stop. And it's rare that any of the sagas are actually all that reliable to get off. You have to think carefully and try and make the best out of each situation. Otherwise the supporting rules are generally kind of fine. Lance melee, advance and shoot and charge if you can activate one of the sagas. And the option to flex the saga rules on any one unit for a CP. There's a couple of the fighty enhancements like Black Death and maybe the Frost Weapon that could be alright on Thunderwolf characters as well. If you're playing this detachment then due to the saga rules you're almost certainly going to go pretty heavily for Hero Hammer. 
Maybe not the worst with the Space Wolves' big access to units, though. Bjorn and Murderfang are quite nice for getting Sargas going, being big fighty characters that the opponent can't really ignore and might struggle to kill in one round of shooting. And then often given it Space Wolves, lots of Thunder Wolves with characters attached can also make good benefits out of the Sargas and get them going themselves as well. In general, this are typically going to want to have a bit more melee than they have range, as a few more of the Saga buffs help out there, plus the supporting stratagems. Overall, as mentioned though, I just don't really think that it adds up against the reliability that some of the other detachments can bring, getting your detachment rules right from the word go, as opposed to having to unreliably unlock them. But it's still definitely not unplayable, and has some fun strength and some big plays if you manage to get the sagas done. Next up and off to White Scar's Biker Land, we've got the Stormlance Task Force. This one perhaps feels like it's maybe one of the most limited detachments in the Space Wolf army, it's kind of rarely used besides Space Wolves, and I'd rate its strength as kind of being very binary. If you're playing Space Wolves with three big maxed out units of Thunder Wolves, it definitely belongs higher on the list. If you're not, with only access to limited biker units like the Outriders and ATV in Codex Space Marines, then it's probably towards the lower end of this tier, if not even bottom tier. The core rule is handy enough for Space Marine melee in general, Advance and Charge and Fall Back and Charge are both good, and the stratagems do have a few quite standout ones, minus one to hit and wound a mounted or fly vehicle, or a big 6 inch reactive move to enemy movement, are both pretty significant all in all. Otherwise though, a few of the stratagems are just very mounted, locked, and the enhancements, again I'd say, are not really all that standout. Usable, but nothing to get too excited about for the points that they cost. Units wise, in general, any melee units will see more value here, as being able to advance and charge all games, no questions asked, is quite big. And then likely as many mounted units as you can use, probably at least some outriders if you're not going Space Wolves, or maybe unique bikers like Dark Angels or even Death Watch. Though I feel like given the Thunder Wolves propensity to melee, they are going to be the top choice. Fly vehicles might just have a bit more value given that stratagem as well. The Storm Speed of Thunder Strike to buff other Space Marine firepower could be nice. Overall, for Thunder Wolf spam, it's genuinely good. Gets them to combat quicker, and they can use a lot more of the synergies and options than the rest can. For anything else, though, I'd probably argue that Gladius is stronger. You still get a turn worth of advance and charge, and he can use it for one CP on the units that most need it. And it even has a slightly watered down reactive move, as well as plenty of other strong stuff besides that. Moving onwards and upwards, these are the detachments that I'd rank as tier 2 at the moment. I say these do have some pretty strong power with the right builds, though probably aren't top of the tree for Space Marines. Here I've chosen to rank the Firestorm Assault Force, the Vanguard Spearhead, the Black Spear Task Force for the Death Watch, and probably Storm Lance here for Space Wolf Thunder Wolf spam. I guess you might argue that that could be even top tier for that though. Starting out with the Salamanders and Transport themed Firestorm Force, this one on paper does seem like it's one of the more popular and successful ones from early tournament stats, highly mobile firepower is definitely handy, and boosts of damage up range, though I feel like you probably want some quite specific lists to really field it optimally, and get good value of things like the Devastating Wound Torrents, or the Transport Shenanigans. The core rule gives you the assault keyword on all your guns and plus one strength to your weapons within 12 inches, and then the stratagems have a very nice plus one to wound for infantry targeting the closest thing with a crucible of battle, devastating wounds torrent combos, and then three different transport tricks, so if you're taking the detachment you're probably wanting some land raiders or repulsors and things. A couple of the enhancements do seem quite usable as well, I do like the flipper dice to a 6 one to guarantee some past saves and some extra damage, and the ignores modifier one is quite nice for a big scary lead unit as well. I feel like this one does have some pretty pushed units, things like aggressors or furnace marines to make use of the devastating torrent combo, maybe with a captain leading them, or Vulcan to give 4 rerolls to the infernus marines perhaps. Infantry getting out of transports are going to be great as well, maybe land raiders or redeemers disgorging a bunch of infantry, maybe blade guard using crucible of battle or repulsors unloading things like Hellblasters perhaps, and generally anything that's close range firepower is helped out a lot by the core rule, things like Torrent and Melter like Eradicators are going to like it quite a lot, Eradicators with Strength 10 and Advance and Shoes are pretty nasty. Overall feels like at least a fairly easy one to use given that the Advance and Shoot helps out a lot of your gun line stuff in the backfield as well. My guess is that this will probably take down at least some tournaments when people get the right armies together with it. I feel like it's pretty nasty though, with people with the right amount of Land Raider Redeemers, Flamer Aggressors, and various other Salamanders tricks already though. 
Next up, we've got the Sneaky Space Marines fielding the Vanguard Spearhead. Again, like the Firestorm, this looks like it's one of the more popular ones, and one of the ones that's been run to a bit more success in early tournaments, though not quite as much as perhaps a couple of the others, and no big event wins yet. The core rule for the Vanguard is stealth and cover for everyone greater than 12 inches away from the enemy, really quite a nice counter-ranged army type rule, and enemy gun lines are going to be a bit less effective, you might often have been able to get cover anyway, but this might give you a bit more positioning freedom with where you put your units without having to worry about being half behind terrain or something. It is a rule that doesn't do anything against melee things though, so that is a bit of a downside. Otherwise, they've got some nice enough stratagems, one return to reserves one that could have units popping up and down around the board, one to run away from enemy charges, which is quite nice, and an infantry shooting buff one for extra ballistic skill and AP. A few of the enhancements are interesting, but I feel like that section is utterly dominated by the big infiltrator unit trait, which feels like that's one enormous focus of the detachment rules. You really want one unit with that enhancement and a character deployed somewhere far forward and ready to do a brutal turn one alpha strike on the opponent if you get first turn and provide a threat that they just really can't afford to ignore in the midfield if they go first. Probably units that are going to be best for that might be something like a massive block of terminators, maybe even deathwing knights of the dark angels. Things like Aggressors or Blade Guard could be quite good for that as well. Something that's scary and general purpose enough to wipe out virtually whatever it can catch. Otherwise, beyond that, you're probably going to want at least a fair amount of ranged infantry, given the detachment rules, with a slight incentive to run a bit more Phobos on scouts as they get a little more value out of some of the stratagems. And long-range tanks and dreadnoughts get some fairly good value as well. For say things like Ballista's dreadnoughts or Gladiator Lancers, duking it out with their equivalents in the enemy army, getting cover and minus one to hit will be quite a nice advantage. Overall, I definitely rate it as one of the stronger ones. The core rule does counter shooting quite well, and the infiltrated unit is potentially a game-changing or game-winning manoeuvre depending on how that goes. They'll feel like it's perhaps quite a big swing as to whether you go first or second. If you're going second, then you might run the risk of just having your big scary threat mauled by the enemy before you even get to use it, which wouldn't be ideal. Perhaps one of my biggest issues with this one is that on paper it just really seems to have a bad time against melee armies. The only thing that helps it out is that retreat from charges stratagem. Other than that, melee armies just seem to do quite well against the core rule where they don't really care about it, and they might be extra nasty against the infiltrated unit as well, as you don't really want to be too close to a brutal combat army that might well just be able to do a turn one charge on you if you go second. Still got a lot of power though, and I suspect that we will see it used and get some placings in events. Lastly for this tier, besides the Stormlance that we've already talked about, is the Black Spear Task Force for the Death Watch. Prior to the Codex, this one was doing very well and one of the best Space Marine detachments with a 49% win rate, but I feel like the loss of Oath and Moment is really going to hit this really quite hard to their core strategy and probably knock it off the top tier overall. For the Death Watch itself, it does tend to get played in preference to the Gladius despite the nerfs that it got, so it still seems like it does enough to compete against that, which isn't bad given that the Gladius is really quite strong and certainly taking down tournaments at the moment. The core rule gives you mission tactics with three turns worth of damage buffs, lethal hits, sustained hits, and then precision sixes army-wide. It's a rule that's really hard to go too far wrong with as it just adds up to flat extra damage. In particular, the lethal hits turn could be really big in the right situation. Fairly brutal against enemies with lots of big tough vehicles like knights. Otherwise, for the stratagems, they've got access to a teleportation move, a few special issue ammo stratagems for bolters, maybe the best of which might be the anti-infantry 2 plus 1, and then flexing out to any of those mission tactics. Getting lethal hits combined with Oath of Moment is quite nasty if it does make sense to fish for those sixes. Two of the enhancements, I'd say, are fairly stand out as well. The Beacon Angelus is rather nice to teleport a close-range unit into threatening the enemy. And the term of Ectoclades gets you two copies of Oath of Moment. At time of recording, it still doesn't have its rules updated, so it still rules as written gives you the full wound rerolls for that turn as well. Though I feel like there's a fairly solid chance that Games Workshop might arrive to that in the future, but I suppose we'll see. For encouraged units, as it's the Death Watch specific one, kill teams do get incentives as they get to get double value out of the special issue ammo stratagems. That does make it really quite efficient when you can have a lot of anti infantry going on there. And with all of those damage boosts, ranged damage dealers in general will just be a bit more efficient. A turn of lethal hits and sustained hits will both be rather nice for that. Overall, I'd rate the detachment as just quite easy to use overall. Extra damage is hard to go too far wrong with, though maybe it's a little bit more specific for the support options compared with the others, particularly since the special issue ammo stratagems were all locked to bolt weapons and can't be used with things like, say, Hellblasters or Desolation Marines anymore. Overall, I think it's definitely got some interest, but it's probably going to be weaker than it was without old-style Oath of Moment. 
Finally, for the detachment that I'd probably consider the strongest for the Space Marines at the moment, I'd rank the Righteous Crusaders, the Iron Storm Spearhead, and the Gladius Task Force. All of these I'd rank as really quite strong for their own individual ways. First up, the Righteous Crusaders still seems to be having a lot of legs for the Black Templars. Prior to the Codex release, it was strong enough to get played instead of the Gladius Task Force for the Templars most of the time. Not that Gladius was bad for it, I feel like they were overall kind of similar power given the advance and charge. The core rule for the Templars though gives them a helpful 6 plus feel no pain from one of their vows, and then you can swap that out for one of the more melee focused ones if that makes sense given the matchup. I think it's quite helpful given the Black Templars unique unit, if you are playing Horde style Black Templars with loads of Crusader squads on the board, having all of those have feel no pain type saves is rather good. Then beyond that, it gives you a whole bunch of maybe slightly situational melee stratagems, lots of ones that could easily be used in the right situation, and I do quite like the one for trapping enemy units in combat, which could be potentially devastating if you do get into the right thing. The Ten Houses Bones is probably my favourite of the enhancements for the 5 plus feel no pain type trait, you can do some fun damage combos with the others though, and in general if you're taking this, you're probably going to be digging into the very very cheap Templar units, Things like 13-point Firstborn Crusader squads or the 14-point Primaris ones. The Crusader squads in particular pair pretty well with the melee support and the Tannhauser's Bone Relic. Overall, even since the Codex, it does seem to have some okay to strong performance. I do kind of wonder whether Black Templar list might be doing weird pivots and maybe going for a bit more things like the Iron Storm Spearhead a bit, given their very nasty multi-melter tanks. Might be that they're just one of the top factions both with this detachment and also with their Iron Storm one. I feel like again, like the Death Watch, the changed Oath of Moment will probably have a bit of an impact on their performance as well. The old reroll wounds Oath of Moment was just very nice with their mass low strength chainsaw attacks, so I think that that will hurt their performance in this detachment a bit here. Next up, we perhaps have the single detachment that's causing the most waves in the new codex. The Iron Storm Spearhead does look like it's certainly one of the very strongest detachments around on paper. It's got strong early tournament performance with the single highest win rate out of any of them. Has already won two tournaments for the Space Marines in the first couple of weeks after the Codex came out, though admittedly that's two fewer than the Gladius Task Force has. It's not really too hard to see why the Iron Storm is getting played really quite a lot though. It just adds loads of raw power, and particularly to vehicles which tend to be some of the stronger Space Marine units for raw damage dealing. The core rule allows you a single hit, wound or damage reroll each time you make an attack. Really quite nice for tank killing guns like LAS cannons, though certainly not useless on things like Dreadnought Melee either. Their stratagems are generally a suite of things that help support vehicles, the auto explode one can be nice in the right situation, there's one to buff a walker and return fire from a heavily injured vehicle, and perhaps the most scary one though is the slightly terrifying Mercy is Weakness one, where you get sustained hits on a 5 plus versus an injured unit shot by a vehicle unit, and if you have the Tech Marine with the lethal hits aura, then you can potentially have lethal and sustained hits on that 5 plus as well. That combo is probably the single strongest thing that the Iron Storm Spearhead can do, it just gives you some drastically improved damage out of any one tank or vehicle. And as well as that target augury web, there's also one to cancel failed saves coming in against your vehicles, and the other two enhancements are both usable, 4 plus fail no pain, and the machine war for some mobility with your vehicles around them. Obviously if you're playing this army you're going to be going heavy on the vehicles, Dreadnoughts like the Ballistas and Redemptor are very nice with it, the Repulse Executioner and the Gladiator Lancer or Reapers to help with anti-infantry can be big, and the Invicta Tactical Warsuit quite likes the Walker stratagem. The Black Templar's unique vehicles, as we mentioned just a second ago, really quite like it with their bolt-on multi-melters, they might be able to make some good use of the re-rolls if they're not used on the other guns for the tank, and beyond that basically just any cheap units with hidden heavy weapons in them are really going to like it as well. I most certainly want a pair of tech marines to lead the army as well, helping out the vehicles from their own rules and being quite cheap, plus bearing those auras. Overall I'd probably rate this one as perhaps the single army to beat right now, absolutely tons of raw power, and I'm certain that we'll see more tournament performance from these guys going forward. Finally, last but by no means least, it seems that there's still a lot of life in the Gladius task force yet. From tournament stats since the Codex, it looks like the win rate is quite a lot lower than the Iron Storm Spearhead, but the Gladius Task Force seems to be rather unusually good at winning events, taking down no less than four big tournaments in the first couple of weeks since the Codex came out, many high placings beyond that, and while the Iron Storm Spearhead might be just brutal with Space Marine vehicles, it still seems like the Gladius Task Force might be the right choice for the Divergent chapters in particular. The Blood Angel, Space Wolves and Dark Angels unique units all get some good value out of the Gladius, and a fair few of the top lists have been out of those chapters rather than vehicle spamming ones. 
The core rules for the Gladius are the combat doctrines, advance and shoot for a turn, advance and charge for a turn, and fall back, shoot and charge for a turn. Really quite nice helping for mobility there, and just super powerful that you can flex to any of those for one command points for any unit that desperately needs one of them. Otherwise, they've got some nice supporting stratagems, a lance melee one, a reactive movement stratagem, and storm of fire for extra AP. That one works rather beautifully with the fire discipline enhancement, which is perhaps one of the best reasons to run the gladius task force. Stick that on a lieutenant or an apothecary biologist, put them with some aggressors or hellblasters, and between the stat stratagem boss with storm of fire and fire discipline and oath of moment, you're basically just spitting out a massive amount of ungodly sustained and lethal hits. And consider that combo is absolutely auto include if you're running the detachment, and probably something to deliver them with, often something like a land raider or a repulsor. Although if you're playing some of the chapters, you could do interesting things like the Blood Angels, Librarian Dreadnought, teleporting units around the board. Due to both having good range and good melee boost, it's worth having at least some of each, I think. And given access to advance and shoot, I feel like shorter range shooting units in particular helped out a fair bit, maybe things like eradicators or aggressors. Overall, still seems like it's an absolutely very strong way to play Space Marines, given the event wins, and being particularly helpful for powerful Divergent Chapter unique units out there. I'd guess that probably this and the Ironstorm Spearhead will probably be the ones that rear their heads the most often at the top of tournaments as a result. In any case, with the Gladius talked about, that brings us to the end of the Space Marine detachments in the new Codex and the indexes for the Divergent Chapters. Let me know your thoughts on how you'd rate them strength-wise down in the comments. Which one of these are you currently most tempted to play with with your army? Finally, if you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming with new ones out just about every day. And if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel quite a bit, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.